If you're wealthy enough in Detroit, you can have water. Uh, if you're not wealthy enough, you can't have water. And that's not a, a society that we want to be living in. In the last four months, roughly 100,000 of Detroit's residents have had their water shut off. The city of Detroit decided to take a hard line and shut off the tap on any household that fell behind on paying its water bill. For the poorest who cannot afford to pay their bill, they drink, bathe, and cook with donated bottled water, delivered by volunteer groups like the Water Brigade. So what we're doing right now is getting all this water that we took from their headquarters, the Water Brigade's headquarters, and we're putting it in this woman's house. And basically it's going to be set up as a hub for this entire neighborhood where there seems to be quite a few homes that don't have water. To respond to this crisis, the Detroit Water Brigade has set up distribution hubs in some of Detroit's poorest neighborhoods, allowing residents easy and discreet access to the water they need. We're at Sonia Brown's house. She's a lifelong Detroit resident and has volunteered her house as a community hub for water distribution. As somebody who's lived in this neighborhood for a really long time, how do you feel about what's currently happening in Detroit with the water shutoffs? Oh, are you kidding me? The water shut off, the way that they're taking over the property, the way that they let the city go down. How dare you rob a city that's surrounded in a state with nothing but water, knowing that this is what's needed? Are you kidding me? I mean, have we truly become a society to where we'll go and build wells and stuff in third world countries, but we'll say to hell with our own right here up under our nose, our next door neighbors, the children that our children play with? And have you ever had your water I've shut off? I've had my water shut off before. They can always tell you, go pay it. But if I got to choose between feeding my kids this week or paying a water bill, I think my babies are going to eat. My babies are going to eat. And I'll go to a neighbor's house and get some water. I'll borrow a bucket of water for someone. Almost half of Detroit lives below the poverty line, and water bills here have climbed higher than just about anywhere else in the country. The sad reality is, now more than 3,000 residents are having their water turned off each week. Any water utility as a part of collection executes shutoffs. Daryl Latimer, who helps run Detroit's water utility, says the Motor City is doing what it has to do. I've been here for over 25 years, and for as long as I've been here, we've always shut off delinquent customers. When we execute a shut off, uh, we have about 60% of our customers come in within 24 hours and pay their accounts and they're restored. What they're gonna say is that, that the people aren't paying their bills, they shouldn't have any water. Uh, and uh, the story's a little bit more complicated than that. Peter Hammer is the director of the Civil Rights Center at Wayne State University. He's been a vocal critic of the water shutoffs and of urban planning initiatives coming from Detroit's mayor. You've got to situate water in the context of, of, of Detroit. It goes back again to the sort of underlying dynamics of huge water uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, declining population, uh, increased poverty. Uh, the, the dynamics in Detroit, and it's not just water. Detroit's population went from 2 million in 1950 to under 700,000 today. Despite the smaller population, the city's 140 square mile footprint remains the same, and so does the water infrastructure. Yet the tax base to support that infrastructure is much smaller, causing higher water and sewage bills. The, the people who have stayed in Detroit, in and, and, and some small part, uh, have been those people who have been unable to leave because they lack resources. Right? And yet people who don't have resources are paying some of the highest property taxes and some of the highest water bills uh, of anywhere in the country. And that means more and more Detroit residents are abandoning their homes or losing them to foreclosure. And as soon as they do, scrappers are breaking in, and in the process of ripping out valuable metal wiring and piping, break the building's water connections, causing the houses to flood and leaving the water department to clean up the mess. The water utility's security officer, Wesley Slaughter, took us to one of the approximately 80,000 vacant or abandoned homes in Detroit. This one's basement was flooded. I don't know if you want to come <laughs> this way. Don't know if I want to venture in here. Right. Oh, my god. <laughs> <laughs> so the basement of this house is completely flooded. It's crazy. 
The water, already several feet deep, was an appropriate visual for how much money is being lost every day through broken water pipes in abandoned houses throughout Detroit. In most cases, the water utility picks up the tab. But what happens when that scrapped property is not abandoned and the money is tacked on to a homeowner's property taxes? So we're on our way to meet up with a woman named Lisa Stevenson, whose house is in foreclosure due to her water bill. Worried about the safety in her neighborhood, Lisa relocated to the suburbs. While attempting to find renters for her property, squatters struck. The house was empty for a few months and squatters came in broke pipes and ran the water for three months. And so when the water company came out, they said it was an old meter. So there was nothing they can do but to add the water bill to the property taxes, which ran up to $19,000. What's your plan now? The plan is, I don't have $19,000. So therefore the house will be sold at auction. Is there any sort of payment plan? There's a payment plan of, three, uh, what is it? $3,000 down, I think it was, and $3,000 a month. So, for a year, which obviously isn't worth it. It doesn't seem like the price that maybe this house will be sold for at auction is really going to even reconcile those water bills. What do you think of the system in general? The system doesn't help you, they just want their money. That's a common situation with homeowners that are renting. What typically happens is they allow that water to stay on, and that sometimes, due to some of our cold winters, pipes may burst, or you may have someone that may squat, or you may have a scrapper that comes in, and now you're still getting billed for water, and you're not there. Some responsibility is on that owner of that home. It's up for debate if Lisa bears sole responsibility for the loss of her house. Does the lack of city services like proper policing allow scrappers to run wild? Why isn't a water utility in a major American city able to detect the loss of nearly $20,000 in water? Are residents bearing the brunt of Detroit's bankruptcy? The entire infrastructure that existed 10 years ago to deal with this issue uh, has fallen by the wayside. There's a whole lot of blame to go around, including uh, a lot of poor decision-making, poor management in the, in the water department. Even people outside the United States are up in arms about the mass shutoff campaign being carried out by the Detroit Water and Sewage Department. The United Nations has called the shutoffs an affront to human rights. And on July 24, 2014, members of the activist organization, the Council of Canadians, crossed over the U.S.-Canada border carrying several carloads full of water. The stunt was greeted by a crowd of concerned citizens and activists outside Detroit's municipal building and in front of the Spirit of Detroit statue. There are thousands of people that live in and around the city of Detroit, certainly in Wayne County, certainly in Michigan, that's been cut off from water. When you say that there's thousands and thousands of uh, customers that are without service because we've executed a shutoff, I challenge to those uh, advocacy groups, bring those thousands of people to us and we'll put them in service, we will provide them assistance. Since you said that there's thousands of people, identify them and bring them to us. Other cities that have engaged in similar campaigns uh, make certain public health exceptions, right? That even if you haven't paid your bill, uh, if there's a, a senior citizen, if there's somebody who is disabled, if there are children in the house, they won't shut the water off regardless. Uh, and that's more echoing in the sort of notion that, that water is a fundamental right. Water is a human right. Water may be a basic human right, but to deliver water, uh, purify water to your home, to collect, uh, your sanitary sewer and your drainage, there's a cost associated with that. So unless there's some way that the government is going to pay for that cost associated with it, water can't be free. Everyone has to pay. <laughs>